Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and this is a mid-session update for Wednesday, April 13th, 2022. It is 12.08 Eastern Times. I'm starting the video, so we're about smack in the middle of the day. Here's what I'm going to do. I want to um, uh, go over all the trade ideas, or at least most of those that I've been highlighting recently that are still you know, active, actionable trades, and even a new setup I'm going to cover. Uh, I'm going to talk on natural gas. Kind of stayed away from that one for a little while, and uh, it's... Um, looking like I might uh, engage that one here soon, so I'll, I'll cover that chart. Um, I'm going to start out with the indexes as usual. Those are, of course, trade ideas, and they're also just general analysis, whether you're in or out of the markets. Uh, and I'm going to cover, uh, I've been focusing a lot on QQQ, the NASDAQ 100 recently. I'm going to cover the S&P 500 and small caps as well. And then, um, again, it's just uh, maybe a reiteration of the same trade ideas I've been looking at lately and in, in, in trading. Um, and I do that to... Well, hey, for new people coming in, cite what's out there, what are what are actionable trades, and and also to reiterate, you know, if I tell you, you know, two days ago, three days ago, I'm bullish or bearish or long something, short something, uh, I like to reiterate, hey, is that anything changed there? So I'm going to start out that that segues into the markets here. Let me pull up. Uh, well, this is QQQ. We'll we'll start here. Okay, so, uh, all right, so uh, we've had a nice pullback, and we faded, as mentioned, this is that big bullish falling wedge that uh, we broke out of, or the downtrend line on the 60-minute chart of QQQ. Uh, back here, you had a pretty powerful buy signal, big divergent low, that divergence should really be there. We put had a divergent low, and we double, double low there, and the divergence is built. There was our breakout, and so... We came full circle. We had a bearish rising wedge. It broke down. That gave us a sell signal there. It got us short. But uh, at this point in time, we do have, as I mentioned the other day, uh, RSI divergence here on the 60-minute chart of QQQ. We've also popped that downtrend line there, and I'm going to show you that on future. So at least for the time being, uh, I think we caught most of that. And I've, you know, an active trading account pivoted. I still think we're going to go lower, but right now, I just... It's just how I trade. I have to, even in, if uh, the larger trend is bearish, I'll still respect these 60-minute divergences. And it just means kind of maybe not so heavy right now for me on the indexes, at least in the active trading account and even in the swing accounts. We still need to, you know, this is going to be... There's no all-in moment, but I'll, you know, if we start to get down to and especially take out those lows, that's when it's time to be aggressively short. In other words, what I told you, I'm watching, I'm recognizing these, recognizing these divergences, suspecting they'll play out, and I think we'll have, uh, we might have a good idea by the end of the week. Let me show you a few other things here. So that's a, uh, that's a 60-minute chart. There's QQQ on the daily. Remember, those divergences showed all the way out through on the uh, daily chart here. So they were uh, pretty big divergences. And they led to a you know pretty big rally those divergences, and then uh, that's that. This is that 60-minute uh, uptrend line we just broke, and there it is. So you can see we pretty much faded all of that. All right, and it was also what's significant about that it was a rejection off the 200-day moving average. Uh, we got rejected back here as I've covered, and then there again. Uh, and so. <sighs> Kind of in a, in summary, I still maintain and, and favor my longer term targets being hit, and that is these uh, targets on the weekly chart here. There you can see that 200 day on the weekly, which is the same as a 40 period on on this weekly chart. Rejections there, rejections there, moving down. And as I've covered in recent videos, uh, historically it's that second once you you fail once, you come back, try it again. That second rejection is then often followed by impulsive selling. It's when the markets kind of realize, you know, what's, what, what I like to refer to as a WTF moment where they realize, oh, you know, the bulls that, hey, you know, we broke the 200-day in the past. We regained it on a lot of the, you know, in the bull market and then ran, but so far another rejection. And it was a, an impulsive rejection too. You know, and go back on the daily chart, several days at it, and you can see two weeks here testing it, and then boom. But again, we're in no man's land. Keep it very simple. Just because we got rejected doesn't mean we can't have another run up and power through. Uh, it's not what I favor, but I'll certainly respect that. And at that point in time, uh, the last uh, big level there is about that 380 on QQQ. But let me show you something on SPY as well, because I haven't talked on that too much lately. But it is more of the market, you know, the NASDAQ 100 I like to trade because it's got more juice in it. It's concentrated, about half tech stocks. And if you get the call on the market right, 
most points in time, uh, whether you're long and bullish in a bull trend or, or short, you're going to get more bang for your buck um, trading the Qs or even the small caps. SPY is diluted, if you will. It's a very diversified index and it's great. You know, it's uh, grandma's index or grandpa's if you're going to invest in stocks. You have utilities and healthcare and defensive stocks um, out there, which utilities are in healthcare, but uh, other sectors as well. And high, you know, dividend paying, steady eddy stocks, blue chips. And um, so, it, it, but it is a very represent, more representative really of the economy because when you're looking at QQQ or the NASDAQ 100, for example, you don't have any financial stocks in there. It's, a, it's not as diversified an index. And so what, what we really need to see to, to sharply increase the odds that my targets are going to be hit, my longer term targets, is the S&P 500 debacle. So let me show you what's happened there. So the big levels, and these are what I've been hyping harping on for months was right here. We had uh, these topping patterns. Uh, they looked to me in the all the indexes, the NASDAQ 100, the uh, Russell 2000 small cap index. And that's where SPY broke down right there. And again, I know this is a recap for those of you that have been following my analysis, but those catching up now or new to the site, uh, this is what happened. Big red breakdown candle. And we've sliced on the on the S and P 500. Uh, we've sliced through again. I'm on a weekly time frame, but this these the red and blue line are your uh, 40 week, which is the same as a 200 day simple moving average in the 40 week or 200 day exponential moving average. And same thing, we pretty much we've traded through there. And I said these lines they're not always hard lines. You know, you can you can go through there a lot of times and in most of the corrections, one or two of the indexes. Remember, I'm looking at Nasdaq 100, I'm looking at the S&P 500 mainly uh for the big caps. And uh, what happened is you took it out intra-week, but then you closed right about back on it, right down. The red candle means you closed down here. And so that was also two tests and a failure at the 200 days. We moved all the way down here, right? Then we came back up and we've been one, two, three weeks testing the 200-day simple moving average or 40-week uh, simple moving average here on the weekly chart. Uh, right there and look we're below it now now we still have the 200 exponential sometimes that one does a trick I like to leave them both up there but so far this is uh, a rejection or if you want to call it a failed breakout if you look at it that way aka bull trap you know some bulls that only trade the S&P um, and even if that was my preferred trading vehicle, I'd always be keeping an eye on the uh, NASDAQ 100 as well. That's where I think a lot of traders fail. You want to see all the indexes because if one index breaks out and all the other big indexes, the Wilshire, the mid caps, small caps, they're all below support and still, you know, uh, in a bear trend, then a breakout in the S&P is likely to fail. So, so far, that's what's happened. Look. Here's the end of it, uh, the short of it, I mean. We're trading on those levels. We've already taken them out a few times. We tried to regain them and we failed. Um, but the failure so far, you know, we've got the 200 here. I want to see us start moving away from there. And that's going to give me a pretty big check mark for the bearish case if and when because that, that rejection will be confirmed. Right now we can say we're just testing those and we could do this, right? Anything's possible. So that's what I'm looking at, bigger picture. I'm also noting these, uh, I don't know if there's a term for them, I just call them PPO rejections. Uh, a lot of times in a bear trend or even a bull trend you have the PPO appears to make, it's going to make a bullish crossover and this is again the weekly chart and that's a pretty big thing, especially when you have clean separation the lines like this and then you get rejected. You either have a brief cross and a whipsaw, or right now you can see if you look really close, that PPO line was headed up, it was poised to cross over, and it's now turned back down below the signal line. So uh, I've seen that at times, especially in big moves. So these are the things I'm watching. If we cross over, it means we're probably going to take out the 200 days. And um, uh, the other thing that happened, I was talking about that trading range a minute ago, yeah, right here. Remember that was an all-time high in the S&P right here where I'm drawing and then we broke out traded above there for a few months and then failed it and then we failed it again here two separate weeks failed it here 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 and so that's where I had said before I also wanted to see the uh, rally in the S&P capped if we got up there and so far that is another breakdown and back test so uh, Bulls want to see this, and again, it's going to you know, certainly be a check mark for the bulls if we get a solid weekly close. What does that mean? Well, this was an intra-week, that skinny part on the candle. 
that shadow up above, when you, the shadow's on the top, you call it a wick. On the bottom, you call it a tail. That's what happened intra-week, but there's where you close. You park pretty much, for all intents and purposes, right back on there. And you have not regained that level on a solid weekly close. If the bulls can put a big green candle and close it up here, so, well, you say, hey, S&P just took back a big resistance level. It's clearly taken back the 200 days. At that point, you're probably going to run at and, and, and at least uh, take out the new high, uh, the previous highs with at least a marginal new high. But it uh, hasn't happened yet, and that's what I'm going to be watching for. So let's see where we go here. The other index, the other big one that I've been trading lately or highlighting and watching and trading in and out of is IWM, the small caps. And story on that one uh, was also that uh, weekly trading range. Let's queue up my lines here. There we go. Uh, this one was a year-long sideways trading range. You broke right here. And you were locked in a year-long sideways trading range. You had a false, a failed breakout there. It was also a divergent high that sent us back down to and below the uh, that big major support level around 209. And we've remained below there. So uh, it's a, a stalemate right now. I'll call it a Mexican standoff between bulls and bears if you want. We're bouncing between major resistance about 209. You're below the moving the big 40-week, 200-day moving averages as well. Um, but you've also held uh, this 192-ish level on a weekly basis. So that's it. Bulls win if we do this. Bears win if we do that uh, it, in the most simplistic form. But, of course, we'll watch the big caps and everything else. You know, my targets already. These are the you know, weekly targets on IWM. And last but not least, let me go to the NQ Futures. This is what it's looking like here on the 60-minute chart. Uh, swing, swing, swing. You had a divergent low right there. That was that double bottom low in the NASDAQ 100. There was our primary trend line. This is a 60-minute chart, by the way. Uh, there was that breakout. We had the big run-up. We put in uh, at that point, well, I'm making a mess with these lines now, but you see where I'm going. You had the... Uh, as mentioned, you had a nice uptrend line, bearish rising wedge. We had a sell signal right there, put a short, and we fell down to a pretty big support level here, that 13.865. Uh, it's big because it's price resistance. I've had that line there for a while. It was also the breakout point right there, and so we faded all the breakout, but we did it, and we put in a, a divergent low. So really hard to be too bearish right now unless we fail that low, uh, then I'll be um, adding back some shorts. And uh, if we fail it, keep in mind, if we fail it very soon, you have the potential, let me draw it out here, for a you know, marginal new low that would still be a divergent low and that'd also be a bear trap, aka false breakdown, if, if they can reverse it. So if you're going to game that as a long trade, you want to wait till the reversal actually takes place to take back. It's a little hair above 380. Yeah, we'll, call, we'll just leave it there. 13,865 up to about eh, 13,900. And so that's one scenario. But right now the divergence is in. And so, you, you know, you can't, you can't ignore these. Um, but again, uh, for the longer term bearish case, if these divergences get burned through, meaning this rally fizzles out, we go down and the MACD and the, uh, the PPO down here, or the PPO and the RSI and or the MACD, if you're using that, they take out in, in these previous lows, then that's pretty darn bearish. And that is indicative of a larger bear trend when I see 60 minute divergences that uh, bullish divergences that fail to play out for, for uh, a decent rally. I mean, the, these would project for a, a good rally all the way back up to at least right here, in my opinion. And maybe that happens. Um, so that's it. So anyways, that's an update on the markets. Um, like I said, we're, you know, pretty diversified now. Firing on just about all cylinders. Let me roll into, uh, let's do bonds right now and then I'll do the rest. All right. So bonds, I got that post out to you yesterday or Monday. Uh, looking uh, as one of the better trading ops for the week. Um, and uh, I know boring old bonds. A lot of people don't like to trade them, but uh you know, the, the futures are heavily leveraged uh, themselves, even each contract, and you can, you know, leverage up as much as you want. You got a lot of buying power from your broker because they're, you know, they're, they're not as volatile, so you can buy a pretty large amount. It's all relative. Again, you know, if you buy a lower beta security, you need a larger position to make the same dollar amount of profit. So we're not going for double digit percentage gains. Uh, that's not what it's about, but you can leverage up. You get a, you know, three, 5% move in treasury bonds. Um, 
it's going to put as much money in your pocket as a 10 15 percent move in nq or es or qqq or spy whatever you're trading uh if you have a larger uh, position size so there it is a t1 hit boom check this is zn the 10 year um this is what uh textbook you know technical analysis or bullish setup should look like you had the bullish falling wedge uh, and then we broke out. There was your buy signal to go long. You ran up, hit that first resistance level, which is a downtrend line, consolidated on it, and then boom, took it out. Next leg up, T1 hit. It's that simple. Um, and now the next buy signal comes on a break, a solid break above T1, whether we get a, a pullback or not. Uh, that was a 10 year. Uh, you, IEF would be your ETF if you want to trade an ETF. And I also gave you a leverage version that po posted on Monday. Uh, if you want the two-time leverage on the ETF. Uh, ZF, five-year right here. Five-year, I told you, I'm, you know, pr have a preference. I'm overweighted the five-year, even though I have, you know, uh, spread out the five, 10, and 30-year. Uh, there's your target, same thing. Just a great example of technical analysis. This was a setup on Monday. There was your breakout, it was impulsive. And then yesterday I mentioned we were flagging, a little bull flag, boom, popped the bull flag and right to T2. And that's where we stopped so far. And a little reaction too. And that's why I have multiple targets. Typically each level, you're likely to get a reaction when hit, boom. So an active trader could have booked profits at 14,066 or hair below and you know, recycle back in on a pullback or on a break above. Now we've got a little bit of the potential divergence here. Maybe the bonds take a breather, maybe not. I'm I'm leaning towards not so much of a breather. I think there's probably a lot of short interest in bonds that are, it's going to start to be cleared out here with this breakout. I think it got just too lopsided a trade. I love being on the other side of a crowded trade. You know, everybody, uh, you know, it's mostly institutions that trade bonds more so than individual and uh, retail traders but uh so i think they were all crowded on that uh, one side of the trade and that needs to just correct it so it already has i mean uh, you could book full profits here and it's a nice trade as is uh one more i wanted to give you the i already gave you the 10 this is a five year and then the 30 year is zb uh where is that zb right here and that one's lacking a little bit and that's again i was favoring the shorter end of the yield curve for various reasons but uh, so far so good not to our first target yet like the other ones but uh moving up in the right direction crude oil another one we're you know firing on all cylinders here lately uh been a lot of long and short targets but most recently you had this uh divergent low at support 93.64 support um positive it gave bullish divergence rallied up broke the trend line but i do want to point out we've got this little wedge pattern now here so i'd watch this if you are long crude um you know this is a more of a rough target zone you have a you have a little bit of a resistance below it about 104 so i'd expect a reaction coming in from 104 to maybe just above that 104 50 ish level if we get there but uh if you are uh still long crude then you might want to heed uh, a break uh, of this trend line use a stop below that and that's going to be a breakdown of the wedge now the wedge can continue to form it can turn into a price channel the trend is still up for now but you have both price support and uptrend line support just below and a break of that uh, could take us down could even take us down for another back test to the wedge or the uh, primary trend line or that $98 uh, support level there um, in which case maybe a you know swing that down short if you want um, but remember keep in mind we're coming off a pretty big divergent low here that uh, you know probably gonna put uh, give us some more upside in the coming weeks in uh, crude oil okay that brings me to a new setup here uh natural gas uh we all know what's going on in uh in europe uh with uh you know the well they didn't stop outright and didn't even come close to outright stop buying russian gas but uh russia's largest producer of uh, natural gas over there and you know the invasion of ukraine there was a lot of calling for boycotting that and they're trying to get away from it and and uh, but either way uh, first and foremost number one is there's been a huge run-up let me just show you the yearly chart if you're not familiar with what's going on with natural gas this is a daily chart one year we're looking at the may contract here on the futures 
and that's that big run up just like we had in crude remember we had a nice short off crude it's gone uh, it's gone uh, virtually parabolic here and parabolic trends usually are followed by a big correction so again i think this is a another very crowded trade meaning you have a lot more bulls in this one uh thinking it's going to go up forever but keep in mind seasonality kicks into play uh europe's uh natural gas season uh the winter season end ended um past tense uh, last month uh it ends in march uh, i think it's uh hold on one second yeah, the winter season's October through March over there, and it's similar here in the U.S., of course. So you have seasonality coming into play here where it's starting to warm up, not as much natural gas needed. Uh, you can see, a, you can draw a trend line there. It's going, it's really more of a parabolic line here. This is your advance, and that's a parabola like that. And so the correction, I think, is going to be pretty sharp when it comes. Now, uh, you know, you got to be careful here. It's not, I don't have any sell signals on it yet, but I'm going to go take it back down to a, what did I have it on, a two hourly 60-minute chart. Let me go back down a little, zoom in a little tighter, one month of trading history. All right, so here's what you have. You have a divergent high, and I left this one up here because, look, it's been putting in divergence. This is what a strong trend will do. A uh, strong bullish trend, just like I was talking earlier in the video with the equity markets. If we're in a bear trend, how positive divergences typically don't play out for much more than just a small bounce. Here was a negative divergence and a strong uptrend, and we had a correction, but it wasn't much. But what it's doing is taking us back. I have two trend lines here. So this is what we're looking at. Let me zoom in a little tighter. If you want to replicate this chart, you can use UNG. Is the ET. It's probably the most popular, most liquid ETN that tracks natural gas. This is my primary uptrend line, or BOD, benefit of the doubt, right? Comes in and captures a lot of lows starting back here. That's the end of March. And you've got quite a few reactions, a lot of candles touching that level. But I also have a secondary trend line that's probably going to bring in some selling if taken out. Uh, I see a lot of reactions there, capturing a lot of the candlestick bodies as well. You can see there as well. So there's my, and then I even have a tertiary, you know, that's my primary right here, secondary, and my tertiary trend line right here, or a minor trend line, and then uh, negative divergence again. So, you know, it's not as if, you know, bottom line is sooner or later, one of these divergent highs is going to be the one that does the trick. Um, we got pretty dang extended to say natural gas is overbought as an understatement. Yes, there's been some tremendous uh, fundamentals driving it. It's not just a, you know, pure speculative thing. But again, it, it you know, that's that's how things work. Everything gets ahead of itself. And when uh, the powers that be, it'll probably come on one of the weekly inventory reports. Uh, but uh you also have some price support right there as well. So there's the magic number. See these recent lows right here? And see that uh, BOD trend line? If you want to take a shot early, you can short any of those other trend lines um, uh, or wait for a break at that level. And then where do we go? Uh, I think I had it out here on a longer term chart. Let me see. Nope. Uh, I'm going to show you. I must have maybe I marked up the June contracts these are going to roll soon but you can still there's still more volume in the uh in the May contracts uh yeah let me pull that up one sec all right I'll, I'll have to mark up the the May contract we were just looking at here's the June you can see those levels this is these are the comparable trend lines the numbers are going to be a little bit different because this is a different month this is the next month forward uh, but there's our small little wedge right there, minor trend line, boom, break that one, come down here. There's your price support, comparable to that uh, other one I was just showing you. And here's your level. So I'm looking said and done. Uh, I think this one has a potential in uh, never underestimate a crowded rush for the exits, and meaning how fast once this trade reverses and uh, the algos and the big trading desks want to go the other way. Uh, you can see a swift move out. We saw that in crude oil recently. We had a nice short trade after the first on that first big drop on crude. So I think ultimately, you know, reactions at each of those levels, but you could probably work your way down here, and that's going to be a 26 to about 27% drop from where we're at right now uh, in natural gas. Okay, next up, precious metals. Again, another one we're, we're clicking away on, on just about all cylinders right here right now. Been long in bullish gold since the hard buy that I gave right here, and it's moved up. Mentioned it was trading in this trading range. Boom, popped it there, broke out. Uh, it's at that, still at that, uh, where it was yesterday, that 1982-ish uh, resistance slash target right here. 
And, um, you know, I mentioned that we had some divergence. We still do. But this is one uh, I'm, I'm quite bullish on right now. And that uh, really I told you, and I'm going to get to it in a second, still like the uh, chart of the euro. I'm bullish the euro and actually long the euro as of last night, added to it today, um, which is to be short the dollar. And so if that plays out, we get a nice rally in the euro, correction the dollar. That's going to be an added uh, tailwind to gold here. If it pulls back, no biggie. I'd like to see it hold it up here about 1957 and or this uptrend line right there. So if you're looking where to add on, you know, and you don't want to buy the breakout above 1982, then you could see if you get a pullback there to that trend line. You also have a minor trend line there. Um, and at this point in time, I don't have any price targets. I'm looking at probably new. I'm, I'm, I'm more of a moving back well i'm actively trading gold because that's what i do but i'm also shifting you know money back in more and more into the long-term trend trade you know long-term accounts iras that kind of thing and looking for new highs and beyond in gold sometime this year and maybe sooner than later we'll see uh silver same story right here you have a nice move there was that hard buy i gave you back here a couple weeks ago uh, from that point, silver has rallied about, let me move, put my measuring tool there. It's hard to do on this platform. You can't move it on top of the other lines. It'll move those. Uh, that is a, so far we're good for uh, eight and a half percent rally off that hard buy in silver futures, which is a nice move. That was, that wasn't too long ago. And, um, Again, it's going to follow mostly follow gold's leads. There's a reaction high right there, right here. I'm going to put a line. You get a couple reactions on it. We're coming up to that now. But my, I, I think uh, we'll probably carry up here to about, I'm going to move this line down just a hair. I'm just looking to place it on the zones. It's 26.34 is really the uh, next support there. And you can see here's a trend line if we pull back. Uh, we get a pull back in silver. You can look to add on that trend line and price support right there. Um, but again, I don't have any desire to short it right now. Uh, and uh, one of those reasons is the euro is broken out. Uh, so the other day, showed you this, you know, there's a lot of lines on this chart, but you had a you know long-term downtrend line here, which for the most part was broken out. We broke out and I highlighted it there. I thought we were gonna go on, have a little pullback, hit my next target. But instead we came back and we back tested this trend line and it's holding up on there. Now, more more recently, uh, to zoom in a little bit here, uh, you had this uh, positive, aka bullish divergence right here. Uh, you had multiple trend lines. I had that one there. We broke out, came in, put another divergent low. We had this trend line right here and popped it today. And so if we can pop this level, uh, which I think we will, 109.38. I mean, there's going to be stops along the way there. There's some resistance, but I think we'll ultimately go on up and hit those uh, previous targets that I had. Uh, and that means uh, to be long or bullish the euro is to be bearish or short uh, the U.S. dollar. That was a uh, three-month, 60-minute chart we were just looking at. This is a six-month, two-hour candle. And so there's a dollar. And to zoom in nice and tight, uh, I'll tell you what's happened in the dollar. Well, let me fix that divergence line. It's kind of moved around a little bit. There it is. All right, so in the dollar, you had a pretty big negative divergence right there. You had a minor uptrend line right here. We broke it. We've been back testing underneath and finally a pretty good rejection. That should take us down at least to that 99.34 level if and when that goes, as I suspect it will. The dollar should come on down here at about 97 uh 97.73 down to 97.58 and or this and this uptrend line this will come in remember as time goes on uptrend lines come in at higher and higher levels so it looks something like this by the time we get there we'll be there and at that point uh if that happens that should be a nice boost to gold and silver and then at that point you might want to look go long the dollar and take profits on some gold and silver if you're an active trader especially if it's at if they are at resistance at the time Okay, and to wrap the video up, just uh, touch on some of the recently highlighted trade ideas, including that RISE, uh, R-E-D-U, RISE Education. Uh, that one was most recently highlighted yesterday. As I mentioned, I've been highlighting this one since way back here. Um, posted as a setup here to be triggered on a break of that trend line with the first target there, which we hit. Then we took out that level, broke out there consolidated in this range recently and then boom popped it today and we are now up uh 
16 and a half percent and it wasn't one of those gap and you can't take it trades here is the open today this was yesterday's close right here so you had plenty of opportunity to get in this morning if you had a price alert set even some mid-level consolidation or midday consolidation and now we took out that consolidation range and we're running and uh, it is thin volume when you see these wonky looking candlesticks here that is relatively thin volume but when you look down um, my volume bars uh, i don't know i haven't tuned down here is a 60 minute chart here we'll just do this a daily chart you can see uh, the volume's been nice the last few days. This is what you want to see in these little thinly traded stocks and on a breakout. So that's it. Let's not over analyze it. We broke out. I don't have a whole lot of, res I don't really have any resistance to my first target about 149. If that's hit, uh, I'll give you a quick, assuming it's hit. We already hit it once back here, that level and overshot it. But uh, that'd be about 55% gain. If the second target's hit about 90, 95%. And if that third and final potential targets hit about 126%, and that would also be from this point here where we first had the breakout, if you're still holding this one, and really it's been constructive charts since then. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to, there it is right on there. If that's hit and we get all the way up to T3, you're looking about a 307% return. And that's why I said in this one, you don't put a lot of money. This is, You put your Vegas money, what you're willing to lose if you walk into a casino. Um, but it doesn't take a lot of, uh, of money to make a nice profit when you, you know, if you have 100, 200, 300% return on your money. Uh, likewise, uh, this thing could crap out. It could crap out tomorrow. It could gap down here and, and you gap way down, some bankruptcy filing or delisting. But uh, as of now, it's bullish. I love stocks. I love trading these stocks that go below a dollar, trade there for a while. They start getting delisting notices uh, from the exchange, and then boom, they get back above a dollar. And if they can maintain that, you know, one dollar above share price, and they don't run into the uh, you know, risk of being delisted. So uh, usually brings buyers into the stock for that reason alone. All right, so that's that. Pot stocks are doing okay. They're still hanging in there. Uh, up today, down tomorrow. Um, uh, OGI is you know, one of them. You know, remember, this was hitting. The, these were all highlighted right here. They were highlighted the very day before they bottomed, right here. I think it was somewhere around there, first highlighted. And each and every one of them was profitable from where it was first highlighted. They went on to break out at different levels, had a big spike in the after hours where a lot of them hit those targets. And so that's it. So when you look at bigger picture, and most of them look similar to this, you have a bullish falling wedge, a breakout and impulsive volume, and a perfect back test of the wedge, and starting to move higher. Need to take out these recent lows. I'd like to see that T3 hit in the regular session, and then T4 zone, and then get out uh, if they are hit. Um, and the rest, Hexo back testing now after hitting T1, Tilray, uh, you know, been a nice run. T2 zone, same thing little first leg up pull back and i'd like to see these guys power up here and go on to hit that uh, these final targets and then get out of those trades cgc same thing pulled back to t1 right now it's still there so um that's about it let me just look at my notepad here i cover treasury pot stocks euro gold silver that's about it so let's um keep it simple again you have a handful of trade ideas out there on on just about almost every asset class we've got stocks bonds uh commodities and um and some individual stocks and uh, uh that's what i'm focused on for now if anything changes i'll let you know this has been randy finney with right side of the chart have a great day